Okay, for this next project, we're going to be finishing this uh, birch countertop from start to finish. Uh, just for frame of reference, this is just over 6 feet, I think 74 inches by about 25 and a half inches. Uh, so it's a pretty small project. Uh, we're going to start by sealing it and then we're going to apply our two coats of finish. So day one, step one, uh, we've prepped our wood surface. We have a full uh, sanding video uh, you should take a look at, but uh, we've sanded to 120 grit. Our final sand was by hand with 120. We wiped it down with paint thinner mineral spirits after vacuuming up any dust, and we're ready to start going. So what we're going to start with is our universal tongue window sealer. I think this uh, makes the projects like these go a lot easier. I got a two fluid ounce of it that I just pulled from here, uh, just to kind of show you how much we're going to end up using. So I got a full two, out, two fluid ounce bottle there, and a label on it so we can keep track on it, just keep track of how much we're using. I got two cleanish rags, uh, one for the top, one for the bottom, we only need one for this part of the video. And then we got our applicator. So again, we have a, a soft kind of woven sponge. Uh, this is a buff puff facial sponge, but there's probably a lot of other versions out there. Uh, sponge wrapped in an old t-shirt or a rag, uh, even just a rag in general works fine uh, for applying it. I think these should make the application a lot easier. Uh, what we're gonna do is just buff it on, buff off the excess. Uh, since we're doing one small countertop, I got one buff puff. I'm just going to cut it in half and actually use one for the top and one for the bottom, and that'll be plenty. So you can do this, either uh, use one to apply, one to remove, or again, use one for the top, one for the bottom. Uh, we're going to be doing the top and bottom about four hours apart, so that's why you wouldn't really use the same one. You don't want to flip it immediately after applying it, well, you almost practically could. Uh, so I got enough on saw horses here, get all our stuff out of the way. Again, this eight fluid ounce bottle, I'm gonna do this countertop. We just did this 90 square feet of red oak flooring with me, uh, right behind me this morning. Uh, and I still even got a couple ounces in here as well. So a little bit of a long way with these types of projects with that product. So we got our clean surface, we got our rag out of the way. I got gloves on. Uh, if you're gonna be doing a big project or you don't have good ventilation, I would definitely recommend uh, wearing a respirator or if you're spending a lot of time doing this, if you're doing five or six of them, uh, perhaps wear a respirator or make sure you have good ventilation. These are low VOC, low odor product, the universe style so there's not a whole lot of fumes. You'll notice a slightly oil type aroma, like the cooking oil, as well as a, a hint of orange or citrus due to the uh, a little bit of salt that's in there. And so from here, we're just gonna pour a little puddle right in the middle. We'll start rubbing. So the first one, it's not going to go super far because we're soaking a lot of it into our applicator. So really we're just kind of getting the applicator wet with that first application. You can squeeze it a little bit more to get some more uh, distance out of it. But we'll focus on the, the edges first. Really all you're looking for is that color change. So we got some shiny spots here, some puddle. We can definitely go pick some up, but we're not, I know we're gonna need a little bit more. So we'll pour a little more, we'll pick it up, and we'll go back to our edge. So we're looking for that color change over the whole piece. Again, these woven pads are great because you can uh, squeeze a little bit more out of them in the corners to get to it. And we'll just work in those edges. So again, there's, this is not a wet brush on product. We're not using a brush. We're not brushing on a thin coat and then wiping it off. Uh, we're not wiping on thin coats. It's got a bit of a viscosity to it, so you gotta work it a little bit. But overall, it's pretty easy to use, in my opinion. So we got kind of the edges pretty well done. And now we'll probably even speed this up a little bit because it's kind of boring, but we're just gonna do the rest of the field. So here's a little close up of right after we finished applying uh, the universal tongue oil sealer. You can see if the light catches it right, you got uh, some shiny areas. Uh, you got some dull areas. Uh, it's kind of hard to show in the camera, but it looks 
close. It looks relatively even. That you know, right there, obviously, it looks a little wetter than the rest. Uh, that's fine. Uh, we're going to catch that when we buff off the excess. So this is a good place to kind of leave it. But you, again, the real key is good, consistent color change. You got different boards here, so it's not going to be a uniform color. Uh, the, the wood's going to accept it differently, but look, you don't have that pale uh, white anymore of dry, unfinished wood. So, no runs, no drips. Again, it's pretty viscous, so it's pretty forgiving in terms of that. Uh, but we just kind of buff it all in. We're going to let it sit for a few minutes and we'll buff off the excess. Okay, it's been about five minutes. Uh, it's pretty, pretty hard to tell, but everything's kind of nice and dry. You still have some shiny spots. The corners in particular are particularly shiny. Um, but we're pretty much ready to finish this up. I got a clean rag here. I folded up a few times. I recommend wearing a glove, but there's really not much on here. Um, again, for that hole, so again, this is just over 12 square feet. Use just over an ounce, probably it's about a little less than half full. Uh, so again, a lot of that's in that pad, but at this point, here's the important step, wipe off the excess. I usually do a little extra care on the edges because that's usually where the most buildup is. When you're rubbing your pad over there, it kind of unloads the applicator. Uh, so definitely focus on those. Uh, you should have a very nice, even satin luster at this point. So a good way to check if you got everything off is get down nice and low and look for any shiny spots. Good lighting is one of the most important parts of doing any sort of finishing project. But get down nice and low. Look for any uh, missed spots here. Also, if you see like you kind of maybe miss a spot, you can usually pick up a little product on your, your buffing rag and rub it into those uh, lighter areas or, or spots that maybe you look like you missed. But overall, you have a nice satin sheen, nice satin luster, good consistent even color. And this is virtually to have some variation anyways. Uh, but you notice you have that nice warm tone from that tongue oil. And we're ready to go. Let this dry overnight. And we're going to apply two coats of finish on to fully waterproof. Uh, from this, we're going to go to our H2O Locks products. Uh, again, overnight dry, buff on, buff off. And we use about just over an ounce for a, a 12 square foot project. Um, if you're going to finish the underside, this is a great product for that because this dries pretty quickly. Again, you can touch it right away. You're not going to catch dust, you're not going to catch debris. If you have clean saw horses, or you can cover your dirty saw horses, or wherever you're working on your project, I let this dry for about four hours, flip it and repeat on the underside, and then uh, you're ready to go. Okay, so we just finished buffing off. Um, we're gonna, one of the last things I always do is I kind of walk around the project and try to get real low and look for any uh, shiny spots uh, that we may have missed. Uh, we're looking pretty good, but uh, that's pretty much the long and the short of it. We buffed on, we let it soak, we buffed off the excess, uh, and we're again, let it dry overnight, and we're ready to go tomorrow. Again, you're not really gonna have any dust or debris or anything stick to this. It's got a bit of an oily feeling to it at first. Um, so you don't wanna be like walking on it or using it or, or covering it up with anything, but you're not gonna catch dust. And because we buffed it, everything's really smooth. We knocked down any wood fibers that were sticking up. We don't even have to worry about dust that may have been on the surface to begin with. So kickstart your ventilation, let it dry. Again, if you're gonna do the underside, you can wait four hours, flip it, and do the underside. Uh, and again, do the exact same process, um, but we're ready to go. So just a quick note on coverage. Again, we, I poured two ounces into this two ounce bottle and we used about that much uh, to do about 12 square feet, just a little bit more than 12 square feet. Um, I was pushing a little hard, I was squeezing it out of the applicator. So if you want to make it a little bit easier on yourself, always get a little extra. You're going to end up wiping some of it off or losing a fair amount of it in your applicator as well, but you won't have to work as hard. Um, so I would say that if you're doing a 12, foot, 12 square foot countertop, yes, could you do it with one ounce? Um, would it be easier to have a little extra so you're not working it as hard or fighting it as hard? 
absolutely. So I would say for this type of countertop, the half pint bottle works great. You can store it well, and that UTOS is great as a base coat for everything again. But uh, one two ounce bottle per side would probably be plenty for, for most things. Uh, if you're doing a particularly small countertop, a sample is fine. But uh, I would say anything more than like 10 square feet, I'd probably go at least two ounces per 10 square feet for a small project. So top and bottom, I'd get two samples. Just a quick note on the Universal Toner Sealer being used with our H2O Locks products on top. Um, for high tannin woods like oak and walnut, we do recommend a second coat to make sure that all those tannins are very well sealed. Uh, it's fine to do a second coat on any wood if you're unsure. You're going to use a lot less product on your second application because your wood is mostly sealed at that point, but that second coat usually helps to guarantee a good seal of those tannins. Apply the same way as before, buff, trowel, wipe on, uh, let it sit, wipe off the excess. Uh, make sure you're applying a healthy amount to ensure those tannins are well sealed. Basically, water plus the tannins in the wood creates tannic acid. That tannic acid can then deactivate the dryers in the H2O locks, causing a prolonged uh, drying time. It could be uh, days or even a week. Uh, they will dry and cure on their own if you do run into that issue, but that second coat of universal tangle sealer will help prevent that. Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, it's the morning after we applied our universal tongue oil sealer, so we're going to get down and take a closer look and uh, talk about the next steps. So here we have our birch butcher block countertops um, with that one coat of universal tongue oil sealer applied. Uh, they are totally dry. We have our nice golden rich color. Um, it's a little uneven and a lot of that usually comes down to the wood itself. As we put our finish coats on, that tends to even out the color and get a little bit more consistent uh, amber hue to it. Um, so right now we're sealed, but we still need to apply two coats of finish. Again, this is the Universal Tongue Oil Sealer, so that works under our original products. It works under our H2O Lox products, which is specifically why it was developed, and it also works under our urethane products as well. Um, other finishes can be used on it, but I would definitely recommend testing first, but in general, any one of our finishes uh, will work well over top of this. Uh, the Universal Tongue Oil Sealer also works well under our marine finishes for exterior projects. I wouldn't recommend it for a countertop. Uh, marine is for exterior. But uh, again, two coats of finish and we're done. We're going to cover the finishing steps here uh, as we continue on with this project. Okay, here we are day two of our birch countertop uh, finishing project. We have one coat of our universal tongue oil sealer on here. It's been drying overnight, uh, so we're ready to continue on. I'm gonna show you what we need for the rest of this project. Uh, so first and foremost, we have our H2O locks finish. That's the one we're gonna be using on this countertop. We're gonna do two coats. So we have our applicator. So this is a uh, synthetic uh, pad type applicator. I don't recommend uh, water-based brushes for this uh, product. Um, these work great and for semi-larger countertops these make the job very easy. Uh, I have the pad and handle here as well as a second pad for the second coat. Um, you can usually wash these with soap and water, let it dry overnight and use it again if you'd like to do that or you just get a, a pad refill and those work well. Uh, to note is this is for solvent, water-based, and wax finishes. You want to look for one that's at least for water-based finishes. If you can find one that's solvent and water, that typically means it's going to hold up a lot better and not fall apart on you as you use it. So find one that's specifically for the finishes that you're using. Uh, I got a rag for runs and drips for that application procedure. And we have uh, gloves for applying as well. Uh, also I have some odorless paint thinner or odorless mineral spirits is fine. Um, and a rag for that. So that's for wiping down uh, dust between coats. Uh, we wipe down our surface and uh, go from there. Uh, it's not necessarily a requirement to sand between coats, but we do recommend it. It just gets you better adhesion and a smoother final finish. So for between coats, I have these uh, very fine uh, maroon Scotch-Brite sanding pads. Uh, they work very well. You could also use a 400 grit paper, although it could be kind of aggressive or 4 out steel wool that might take a little bit more effort and you're also using a water-based product so you got to make sure you get all of those little steel wool fibers off so you don't have rust spots uh, especially on lighter woods and things like that so i tend to keep steel and water uh, separate so first things first we're going to clean this counter off 
Uh, we're gonna wipe it down with our paint thinner and our middle spirits, let that dry. We're also uh, gonna shake this up. Uh, again, gentle stirring for a little while and let it sit. So usually I would say stir it first, uh, wipe your countertop down second, and then by the time that's all dried and ready to go, this is rested long enough so you're ready to finish. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this cleaned and ready to go and we'll put our first coat on. Okay, so our birch countertop has been wiped down with mineral spirits. We've let it dry for about 15 minutes so the color is back to where it was before we wiped it down. Uh, you're not gonna see much color change, but uh, we got a nice uh, smooth, clean surface here. So we're ready to start applying our finishes. We got our pad. Uh, it's always a good idea to take like a lint roller or a piece of masking tape, wrap around your hand and just kind of lightly go over this to get rid of any loose fuzzes. Usually these are pretty good the manufactured ones but it uh, never hurts and uh, we're ready to start applying our finish so we've let this sit the bubbles have died down we'll pop the cap off and with the water base we're just going to pour a puddle and we'll spread with the pad so first thing we want to do is wet out the surface if you notice this looks like chocolate milk um, this is a water-based emulsion of our resin modified tongue oil finishes so it's really truly a an oil-based product still it's just delivered in water <coughs> so what's going to happen is uh, that water makes this cloudy and when that water evaporates uh, after a few minutes usually about 20 to 30 minutes depending on the humidity where you're at and so on uh, it, that cloudiness is going to go away and you'll be left with this nice clean clear oil based finish it will basically look exactly like our original products and uh, start to dry and, and act just like those original products from the past so first things first we're going to spread this around not really using any pressure to squeeze out the pad but work on getting those edges And we don't need to go with the grain or anything like that. We just want to get everything nice and wet. So good lighting on projects like this is very crucial because you're not seeing much color change there. But when you get down nice and low, you can usually see where you have shiny, glossy spots or very dry looking areas. So this is looking a little drier than I'd like. So we're actually gonna put a little bit more finish on. We're kind of looking for a nice, consistent, milky, bluish brown over the whole piece. If you're seeing a lot of clean wood color, that probably means you're a little bit too thin. So we're gonna go ahead and apply a little bit more. And don't worry too much about the bubbles. If you can tell, most of them are usually are kind of going away on their own. Uh, as that water leaves, it'll also smooth a lot of that out. Um, so don't worry too much about that at this point. Again, step one, wet out your surface. And then you'll see step two, we're just gonna kind of uh, smooth everything out. If you can see your brush marks very clearly, or if you have to push too much on the applicator, you're going too thin, uh, you should really just be kind of letting the applicator glide over the surface. Okay, so again, we get down low. We have kind of a nice milky brown cast over the whole surface. Let's leave a little thin over here. And so now we're really gonna smooth everything out. So you wanna hit your edges, and I usually just take, I like these wide applicators because it makes this step pretty easy. But we just start at one end, and I'm just gonna drag this applicator from one end to the other. And off the other side, and just kinda work our way down the finish. This is gonna get rid of a lot of those bubbles. And again, no pressure. We wanna leave that nice liquid wet coat on the surface. But we're, this is gonna even out any puddles. kind of give us a nice consistent fill. So one thing to be aware of is when you're dragging this over the, the starting edge, 
you know, a lot of times you're scraping material off. So that's a great side to make sure you're catching runs and drips because that's where the most uh, potential for runs and drips are is as you're basically unloading the brush as you're coming up that side. Uh, so definitely take your rag, I apologize if I'm off screen, and wipe off your edges here. While you do have a wet pad, you also want to just do a light wipe down your edges. Again, to get that consistent color that we've talked about in the sealer steps, um, but we're not really looking to get a big wet thick coat on here because we don't really need it. You're not going to have standing water on uh, your vertical surfaces, hopefully. Uh, that would be probably a weird phenomenon if you got that going on. So we're not putting any pressure on, just wiping those edges down. And then I always follow that up by wiping the underside of that edge so you don't have any runs or drips uh, heading out to the bottom. So again, step number one at this point is we need that water to evaporate. And then we just let it dry. Again, you'll see some imperfections, you'll see some bubbles, that's okay. Uh, if anything stays in the finish, you do have a light sanding step that usually takes care, again, 99% of that with very little effort. Uh, most of these bubbles, most of this roughness will go away. It does not need to look perfect at this point. But if you see something glaringly obvious, like a big fiber or, or anything else, this is the time to, to pick it out. And again, you can just do one quick drag uh, to smooth everything and, and level everything back out. Uh, I wouldn't mess with this after about five, 10 minutes. It'll start to body up, start to set up. So kind of once you get a, a nice wet coat, once you're done, walk away. We can usually take care of any issues in that second finish coat. And again, check for runs or drips. Make sure you check your floor as well. Uh, this is a water thin product, so it will drip. Uh, you can wipe that up again with soap and water. If you get to it quick, if it starts to set up, a little bit of mineral spirits uh, will take off anything that's set up. Uh, you can rinse your pad with soap and water, and from there, we'll let this dry overnight. Uh, 24 hours, we'll do a light sand tomorrow just for demonstration, and we'll put our finish coat on. Okay, it's probably been about 10 minutes since we applied our first coat of H2O locks. Uh, you can see kind of some streakiness, so you can see kind of glossy, and we can see a little bit of that chocolate milk color still uh, showing through. Uh, again, most of this water is leaving pretty quickly. It's a particularly uh, snowy April here in Cleveland, Ohio, so it's a little bit dry, so that water is going to evaporate a little bit faster uh, probably than in a, a wetter environment but uh, it's not looking super pretty right now, but that's okay. We're gonna let that water evaporate and then we're gonna let the uh, rest of the formula do its work. Again, you can see a little bit of imperfections in there, but a lot of that roughness is going away on its own. But we're just gonna let this settle. We have ventilation off right now. If you wanna have a very slight fan ventilation going, that's okay, but we don't wanna kick up a whole lot of dust and we don't wanna over dry this too quickly. So we're gonna let this dry. Uh, we'll come back in a few hours, it'll be dry to the touch and look pretty good, and uh, we'll talk about uh, next steps. Okay, we're back at our countertop project. Uh, with uh, We have one coat of Universal Terminal Sealer on and one coat of our H2O locks. That's well, looking pretty good. Uh, it's been about three hours and we're pretty much dry. There's a bit of a grip to it. I definitely wouldn't walk on this or, or set anything on it or put any pressure on it. You'd probably see that set up. Um, but in general, we're looking pretty good. We kind of got a nice satin luster. You can still see some of that grain definition. But if uh, you noticed before, we have a little bit more of a rich amber color. It's definitely starting to even out. Uh, so we're looking pretty good. Uh, one thing of note here is I did have a little too much on the edge. Uh, when I was doing the edge, I kind of, again, you kind of unload that pad so it tends to sit up. So I got some bubbles here. Uh, it's a little bit rough. So we're going to take a look at uh, how to deal with that tomorrow. We'll let this dry overnight. We'll turn the fan on it, get some good air movement over it at this point. Again, we're dry to the touch, so you're not going to have any dust sticking to it at this point. So time to kickstart that oxygen. Uh, oxygen is going to get you a really nice, good, thorough cure and ready for that final coat.
Okay, welcome back to day three of our birch countertop project. Uh, we're feeling pretty good, but there are a few rough spots here, uh, especially between some of these boards, so before you get some of that bleed back, um, but there's a little bit of roughness, so if you're looking at it real close, you're not really gonna see much, but if you wipe your hand across it, you will feel a little roughness. What we're gonna do right now is a quick uh, sanding step. We're also gonna take care of those bubbles we noticed on the edge here. And so what I have here is what we'll need for that project. So we have a sanding block with some 400 grit paper on it. This is a wet dry paper, uh, 320 or 400. I wouldn't go anything finer than 320 or finer than 400 or coarser than 320. You could probably go a little bit finer if you wanted to, but that's just gonna mean you're gonna have to work a little harder. Sometimes the more you work, you just create more heat and sometimes makes more problems than it solves. So 320 or 400 is gonna cut through the, the top surface pretty quick. Um, and just getting that rough stuff off without much effort. So I would say there's no point to go to like 800 or 1000 and really polish this. We're not, we don't need to do that. And then we're gonna follow up that uh, light sanding step with this um, synthetic uh, steel wool is what they sometimes refer to it as, but it's basically a maroon scotch brite pad. It comes in as a very fine, uh, that is what they, uh, that's more similar to the steel wool uh, grating, if you will, as opposed to a grit. So very fine, it's pretty good for uh, sanding between coats. Uh, you can even do very, I forget what the next level is, but it's uh, super fine or very, very fine. Uh, but maroon is usually the color that everybody uses for that very fine designation. So this is gonna be more of our buffing process. So once this, we're gonna remove the, the big bumps and coarse stuff, and this is gonna kind of even everything out. Uh, we're gonna use a little bit of mineral spirits to Kind of lubricate this so it's less aggressive and we'll film the whole thing because it's not going to take very long and it's going to show you how little sanding you really need to do uh, we're not trying to do a whole lot to this coating we're just going to smooth out this top surface so i'm going to get gloved up and cleaned up and uh, we'll get going all right so again we're going to get started with our 400 grit paper on our block uh, we're going to just do a few passes by hand. The key thing that you're doing this step is don't use any machine or tool. It's really going to take very little effort on this step. We're not trying to do too much. We're just trying to knock the big top surface bumps off. Uh, and then also focus, uh, pay close attention to the edges. Don't go too aggressive on the edges or you can start getting down to bare wood pretty quickly if you just stay in one spot quite a bit. So again, we're just trying to smooth it out. It doesn't need to look perfect after this step. We're just getting rid of the big stuff. So I use odorless paint thinner, you can use odorless mineral spirits, you can use regular mineral spirits, uh, you can even use UC compliant mineral spirits at this point, as long as you let it dry. Um, you can even use soap and water, a drop or two of dish soap into a little uh, bowl of water is plenty, just to give it a little bit of lubrication. If you are going to do the soap and water method, make sure you wipe it off immediately when you're done, uh, and probably even rinse it off too, so you don't have that soap sitting around. Soap on a fresh oil, it's going to try to break that down, and we don't want that. Typically I just pour uh, kind of a little puddle or you can pour right in the applicator or sometimes you can just have like a little bowl. But uh, we'll pour a little bowl, puddle and we'll dip our pad in there and you can feel it kind of slide over the surface. As it starts to dry out you get a little bit of grip but really no pressure on the block. And again, be careful on the edges, don't try to round those off. But we're just kind of, kind of gliding over that surface. And you'll see some of the paste start to form. If you feel like your paper's grabbing a lot, then put a little bit more mineral spirits on or work back to your middle where you probably have more. And we're doing this all with the grain. No pressure, just a few passes. We're not trying to remove a lot of code. And then the edges. You can uh, you know, work these a little harder, especially if you got a big defect. Don't just focus on one area. Do long passes over the whole section so that you uh, don't just kind of gouge out or, or dig out one spot. And again, really no weight on the applicator or on the sanding block. Just kind of let it glide. That's why these blocks are pretty good because they do have a little bit of weight to them themselves. So you don't need to put all effort in. I definitely had some wet corners there. So again, we're 
We're kind of sanding off. We're not just rounding off that corner. That removes a lot of finish. And again, it doesn't need to be perfect because that next coat's going to take care of anything that we don't get with this coat. So that's done. We'll set that aside. And you can either wipe this off and kind of peel it at this point if it's particularly rough. Um, just take a clean towel, wipe it off real quick, run your hand over it, look for any major bumps again, and you can repeat that process. Um, it shouldn't take, again, a whole lot of effort just to knock those surface bumps off. That's really all we're trying to do. So our surface is still a little wet, so we can go right into this, but uh, we'll just add a little bit more mineral spirits here. And this is going to be much less aggressive than the paper, so you can be a little bit more aggressive with it. But again, no machines, um, no heavy pressure. But we're trying to do a nice even buff over the whole surface. So the very fine is going to get filled with the next coat that we put on. So it's okay to do swirls. It's okay to go with the grain, against the grain. Uh, if you are going to go strictly against the grain, I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time really pushing down because you'll see those horizontal scratches kind of fighting you if you go too aggressive. But uh, in general, as long as you're not being extra aggressive, you could go any direction you want. I like the little buffing method just because I think it makes everything nice and even. Again, that very fine, we're going to fill that with the next coat. So don't worry too much about your direction. Again, don't work too hard on edges. You don't want to round those off. But you want to clean up, especially if you spend a little bit of time sanding there, make sure they're nice and clean. From here I usually like to get really low, and you'll see where it's kind of shiny. You should be able to see that you kind of have a relatively consistent sheen. Um, that's kind of what we're looking for. You'll see spots that look particularly dull. That's where we buffed and where you may have some sanding residue there from the, from the pad and the kind of the slurry we're making with the, the solvent. Uh, so that's okay. You don't want to see any like really clear spots or, or, or dry spots that maybe we've, we've gone too far, not the end of the world. Um, but again, you're looking for good consistent shine. If you see a really shiny area, you probably never sanded that. If you see a really dull area next to a shiny area, try to even those out a little bit. And again, very little pressure, very little effort, and that's it. Uh, we're going to wipe this down with a clean towel. Uh, maybe even wipe it again with some mineral spirits to make sure all that's gone. And we'll let that dry, and they're ready for our next coat. It's always good to have a few rags on hand. We're just picking up all this kind of slurry that we made there, so that's finishing mineral spirits. So we'll just kind of get it nice and dry. Because we made that slurry, you really don't kick up a whole lot of dust, so don't worry too much about that. But uh, if you feel like you were doing it dry or you didn't use that, then definitely make sure you vacuum up any spare dust, residual dust. And then you can get it down nice and low, especially once you've dried it off. Everything should look pretty even. It doesn't need to be perfect, but uh, you should be able to run your hand across it and not feel any major imperfections. Now you may feel some with just the wood being the way that it is, if there's open grain, if you have uh, some character in that wood, you may feel a few things, but uh, overall you should have a pretty smooth surface, both looking down at a low angle and feeling it with your hand. So again, we'll let this dry and we're ready to put our second coat up. Okay, we wiped our countertop down after that light buffing with our paint thinner mineral spirits. We've let it dry 15 minutes. Uh, I would take a good dry rag and uh, make sure you just do one quick wipe just to get rid of any stubborn dust or anything that may have settled, especially if you had a fan going. Uh, now it's time to turn that fan off for this application. Again, we're doing our final coat, so we want everything to be kind of nice and still, let the finish do the work. Um, so we'll minimize our ventilation for the first couple hours while that water evaporates. And then once everything is kind of set to touch after about three to four hours, 
then you can kickstart that ventilation and get it nice and cured. Um, so right now we have our pad, we have our product, and we have a rag to wipe off our edges. And with that, we can just hop right into it. Of course, we got gloves on. And again, if you're going to do a very large project, or you're doing a lot of smaller countertops, or, you, or you're in a kind of a closed, confined area, uh, a respirator with an organic cartridge is always a good idea. Uh, it's not as critical with the water-based products, but uh, it's still uh, not a bad idea to, to mess with your lungs. So from there, we'll get started. So as with our previous coat, there's really not going to be anything different. We're just going to focus on getting the surface nice and wet. Uh, I'm actually using the pad that I just used on the, the floor behind me. You can still see that's still kind of a nice milky haze on it. But uh, this was a, a re-washed pad with uh, soap and water. Let it dry overnight and we're using it again. So instead of wasting some more water, we're just going to jump right into it and get both of these projects done with one half a So. So again, we typically just kind of pour a puddle and work from there. Uh, if you're doing a, a long run, you can pour a line and kind of work it out. Uh, some people go with this kind of like W uh, type pattern just to kind of wet everything out. This is water thin, so don't be you know, slinging around. You can push these puddles around pretty easily. Uh, be careful on your edges. I usually like to brush off the edge as opposed to on. Again, that unloads the pad um, and tends to make a, a mess for runs and drips. So when you're initially wetting out your surface, it's usually good to work off the edge and not press too firm so you're not kind of squeegeeing out your, your applicator. So again, one of the benefits of this water-based product is you do have that kind of that milky look to it due to the fact that it's an emulsion. So it's usually pretty easy to tell when you got everything coated. Uh, we're looking kind of for that nice haze over everything. I'll just do an example here, but uh, if you if you press down on the pad, I pretty loaded up, so it's it's even hard to do. But it looks clearer there, or you can see those marks, and we're obviously creating a lot of bubbles. So we don't want to press on it. We're just kind of letting it glide, and we're really using the applicator just to push those puddles around. So usually a drag will help get rid of those bubbles. Uh, we'll see how that that dries out, but it should be very nice. Um, so we're going to do our final step. We got everything nice and wet. Uh, at this point, we'll do the edges real quick just to kind of get them coated and even and this way we won't have that build up on the edge when we go to finish like we did on the first coat again these vertical surfaces really don't need a whole lot but the putting this thin coat on the edges helps to keep consistent with the rest of the counter so you're not going to have the same standing water and wear and tear on the vertical surface as you will the horizontal. So we got everything nice and wet, we got some marks here. We went kind of haphazardly, so now we just take our pad. And this time we will unload it a little bit, but that's what the rag's for, we'll catch those drips. So we just take it, set it, and drag. You can even go both ways. Set it and drag. And with these wider pads, it makes these uh, projects go a little bit quicker. So it's not going to look perfect, you're going to see some bumps, you're going to see some bubbles, but again, we'll let the chemistry do the work, we'll let the bubbles work their way to the top as that water and solvent still there to help them uh, get out of the finish, and by the time this is all dry to the touch, it should look very nice and smooth. So with that, uh, we, again, we'll catch our, our drips with our rag, so definitely go around the underside. So don't wipe those edges we already coated, but go around the underside of your countertop to get any major drips. And walk away. Again, keep your ventilation to a minimum at this point so you're not stirring up a lot of dust or debris because this is our finish coat. Um, this will be dry to the touch in a couple of hours and you can come back and uh, turn your fans on there to really drive that oxygen flow over the surface. Um, other than that, we're done. We got our coated universe terminal sealer on, two coats of water based H2O locks, and our project will be done as done in a couple hours.
Okay, it's the morning of day four of our birch countertop project. Uh, we're looking pretty good. We got one coat of Universal Tongue Oil Sealer and two coats of H2O Lock Satin Finish on this, and it's looking and feeling pretty good. Uh, we're bone dry, so we're ready to just kind of let this cure. A, a light breeze blowing over this, so a, a small desk fan or a box fan. Uh, even more so is uh, great for just blowing air over this and I'll get it nice and cured There's already very little odor or smell to it. It's feeling uh, very nice and dry. No grip no tack So that means we're getting a good cure um, At this point, I would say you want to be Careful uh, with it for the first 24 48 hours if you don't have to move it don't um, If you're going to be handling it or moving it or working on it uh, protect it as much as possible for that first seven days. This is what's going to be the softest it is. It's also going to be the least water resistant for the first seven days. So try not to leave a whole bunch of standing water on here or really any standing water at all. If you have a spill, wipe it up immediately. And no uh, washing or, or heavy cleaning for that uh, first seven days. Uh, once you hit that seven day mark, you're pretty much good to go. It'll be fully livable, fully usable, fully cleanable. Uh, make sure you're cleaning properly, no bleach or ammonia, of course. Um, and it looks pretty good. You could feel a bump here or there, especially in some of these gaps. Again, this has been sanded down quite a bit of times. But uh, the best thing about the resin modified tongue oil finishes is they tend to wear very well. So as you use this piece, it basically kind of buffs itself out, polishes itself out, cleans up those bumps. Those bigger bumps will fall off pretty quickly and you'll have a nice smooth surface. But uh, you don't really see anything, and they hide it very well. And that pretty much concludes our birch countertop. We have that nice, rich, golden color. Looks just like we would have done it if we stuck with uh, all of our original products. Um, and we got that nice satin finish.